put on this computer. We are recording. Awesome. So I'm just, I hate doing this because I feel really rude. So I'm going to mute everybody. Oh, you mute yourself. Even better. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you for helping me. Can you hear me, yeah? Nod your head. Can you still hear me? Okay, guys. So welcome to our little world tour Zoom. Uh, for the little story, we've got some Dutch people on here. Your world tour did not go ahead at all. And in Manchester, some of us traveled quite afar, <coughs> me included. And also the awesome Amy in France, who traveled over to Manchester. And um, it got canceled when I arrived. Excuse, look, excuse my beard. I'm trying to put a smile on everybody's face. Excuse my beard, but we are on a lockdown growth because I, obviously my barbers ain't open and I can only trim it up. And, I and we're moving house. We are in the middle of moving house. We have to go ahead today that we can move house this week. How cool is that? But um, the razors are stuck somewhere. So you're going to have to make do with my Santa Claus look for the next few weeks. But um, thank you for joining us. But I just want to, we're going to do this every Monday for the next few weeks, just so everybody feels that they can come on and get a smile. I don't know if you watched my video the other day, but uh, we've, been in, we've been in business and crisis before. Um, this is all new to me. We've not been in Christmas and uh, crisis and virus crisis, but we have been in business crisis before. We've had recessions. We've had a family crisis, very many family crises, and we've come out the other side. And you guys will come out the other side of this. But what I want you to remember is there's lots of people. I've had messages over the weekend that people are looking for a work from home opportunity. And we actually have that work from home opportunity. Amazon sales are roaring at the minute. And I don't want to be like, you know, it's like, I don't want to be like, well, there's tragedy going out there. So let's take full advantage of it. Because I, I, I am very compassionate to a lot of people. But this is a time when your business could thrive. I and mean, if you think that you're going out there to get business, to make money, then things might not go according to plan. But if you go out there wanting to add value to people's lives, wanting to sell a quality product, you know, I don't know if you saw my post yesterday. If I want to drive long distance and I'm looking for a car, I am, I'm not going to look at the price of the car. I'm going to look at the comfort of the car. If I'm looking to just have a little run around to get from A to B, then I'm going to look at price and I'm going to look at, you know, convenience, price convenience, because it's not, it's not a necessity right now. People want soap, so we might as well give them the best soap experience ever. I've just washed my hands for 20 seconds. I think it's Go Go Mango. And my hands felt absolutely great. So make sure you're sharing these products because people need these products. Fragrance lifts people. Fra I don't know if any of you have ever studied fragrance, but especially our diffusers. I'm a massive diffuser fan. And I use my diffuser to help me sleep. I use my diffuser to give me energy in the morning. You know, I, there's many different essential oils to switch on. Very lots of sig happy signals, sleepy signals, energetic signals. And that's what you sell. You sell fragrance. In a recession, and we're not in recession, guys. We will get out of this fast. But in a time of crisis, people of chocolate. I bet who is, who's been reaching for the chocolate cupboard recently? I bet you've all been reaching for this after this, this weekend. Well, there we go. Slimmer, Slimmer's World of the Year, Lisa Gary. Yes, see? Me too. I don't normally eat chocolate, but I've been reaching for that chocolate cupboard, and I've been having my fragrance on all around the house. And that's what fragrance does. It cheers people up. But I just had to do something, and I had a bit of social interaction, which I've not had for a week. Okay? Over a week, apart from with my family, it was distant social interaction. But it felt so good. It felt so good just to speak to people. So we're sensing consultants, let's sell our products which cheer people up, but let's also get on the phone and speak to our customers who we're selling to and put a smile on their faces. That is what we're here to do. If we do that consistently, business will look after itself. We're here to be entrepreneurs. We're here to think outside the box. And, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna spit it right out there. One of the biggest excuses I ever hear is. I want to join, but I don't want to do a party. I just want to work it online. And probably 8% of people in this group are probably given that excuse. Well, guess what, guys? This is your time to thrive. This is where Scott says, no, you don't have to book a house party, guys. But we've got to think outside the box, and we've got to think online. Um, and we've got to think outside the box, and we've got to start making a lot more sales online. Yeah? I've just been on the road. 
okay, which I got permission to do. UPS are out there. Sir, who are a Spanish courier out there. Everybody's out there delivering goods, okay? So don't hold back. Yes, people are going to say no. Yes, same as usual. Yes, people are going to be a bit worried about their finances. But in the UK, for you know, Big Bad Boris is looking after you guys. People are going to be sat at home spending less with more income coming into their bank accounts. Yeah? And in a time of tragedy, people want to make people happy. People want to send other people gifts because that's the way they communicate. Make sure we are the, those people who make those people happy. Make sure we are those gift givers. Make sure we offer our awesome customer service, a song of awesome fragrance products. Like I said, my hands smell great. Anyway, you've not tuned in here to hear me ramble on, but it is business as usual. Like I said, our numbers, I have a forecast. I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to stuff like that. I have a forecast every single month where our numbers should be. And we are actually ahead of my forecast. And that coming from that proves that my theory is right. Yeah, these products sell in a bad time, but it's up to us. You know, we can't just say, okay, it's a crisis. Scott says these products will sell. I'm just going to switch off now and let the, the orders come in. If life was like that, I wouldn't be on a Zoom with you today. I'd just be sitting back getting the orders in. Yeah, life is not like that. We still have to go out there. We still have to get it. We still have to get it by both hands. Recruiting is. This is a great opportunity to share the opportunity. Yes, people might not say yes straight away. We got recruiting rock star Krista Van Bruggen on the call today, who has recruited three people this month. See who else on the call. Amy's recruited two. Janelle's on the call, recruited one. Yvette's recruited two. Um, that's all I can see. Manon's on here. She's recruited one. Lisa Gary's recruited two. You know, so this is a time where you share the awesome opportunity because people want People are finding out what I'll, the Sensi lifestyle is all about. As my mum says, you guys are all right. You know, you're used to working from home. I said, yeah, try working from home with, you know, a, a six-year-old. And also, me and Alexandra are quite close together. <laughs> Normally, we're quite far apart. So, you know, try that one. That is a recipe for a big <laughs> argument. But it's, we've kept our call. We're not, no, I'm only kidding. Um, so, yeah. So, this is a great opportunity to share the opportunity. So, anyway, enough of me rabbing on. Let me pass you over. Oh, man. What comes... Oh, Amy. Amy. I did the alphabetical order here. So, Lisa or Amy? It's going to be Amy first. Amy's going to give you a 10-minute 10 10 world tour talk. Um, Amy is super knowledgeable, knowledgeable. You know, like I said, she's in just as bad lockdown as us um, here in Spain. I guarantee this lady will be recruiting like crazy and selling like crazy and also mentoring her team to do the same because that's what she does. So I can't think of anyone, any two people better to learn from this morning than Lisa and Amy. So let me open up Amy. Open her up on the, on the Zoom. Hello, Amy. Okay, hey, good morning, everybody. I'm going to just mute myself and then I'm going to come in at the end and maybe ask you a question or two, yeah? Okay, sounds good. Perfecto. And as Amy said at the beginning of the call, she's even tried to make it like Will Tour Manchester by wearing the same clothes she was wearing in Will Tour Manchester. So <laughs> thank you for doing that, Amy. <laughs> Lisa's off to get changed now to what she was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It's all yours, Amy. Okay, sounds good. And at the end of this, um, y'all can um, send me your emails or maybe I can just upload the file to the Team Emeralds, but I have... Um, slideshow presentation for y'all so i'm just going to click through here so the the theme for Cincy world tour is is climb this year um so here's just a little bit about about myself and my team so i was the first director in france i have a global team we are the international superstars i joined Cincy in february of 2016 and i got my first team member in september of 2016 so i'll turn my camera back around for a minute and just be able to read my notes because normally i'd be on a stage with the note with my presentation behind me but i will do another YouTube recording of myself. Um, but for Zoom, for y'all today, this is what I'm, how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna split my camera around. I hope you guys don't get dizzy. But um, so for all of the Cincy World Tours and all the locations around the world, 
it was all the same topics, but it was local people from that area or that region were going to perspective from everybody in your local region. So I am talking about lead the pack. Okay. So uh, once again, I'm Amy Miesch. I'm actually from Texas. So I'm a Texan that has been stranded in Europe since 2012. Uh, I came over here into Europe to work in London and use my big fancy diploma only to be laid off from that job. Fell in love with the Frenchie in Poland. My job from London got offshore to Poland. So that's where I met uh, my husband, Mika. And through hard work, became the first director in France. Um, so once again, I told y'all we have a global team. So we have team members in France, the Netherlands, and all over the United States. Um, so yes, I joined in February of 2016. Now I didn't do too much with Cincy, I'll be honest. I didn't do too much until September of that year. We had a join special and I recruited three people and officially had a team. Um, I immediately created a team page and did Facebook Lives daily. So um, you guys can maybe just do um, a little happy dance, shout yourself out. If you have at least one team member, you know, raise your hand, give us a thumbs up, give us a, a, an emoji in the in the chat box. But um, you know, you are a leader. You do not have to be a director to be a leader. You are already a leader. Um, and then I was going to say, you know, raise your hand if this is your very first Cincy event. So if this is your very first world tour, you can give us a shout below as well. Um, you might not think you're a good leader, but you are. You went through the same experience your new team members are going through now. You can give them advice, help them achieve shooting star and sensational start, and help them get to certified ASAP. So y'all, our team chooses us, all right? It's not enough to just tag your team members in comments or posts that are up to do. So our upline, so all of our upline is Scott and Alexandra. We have the same, they are superstar directors. And so in Cincy vocab, we, that is what we refer to when we're talking about our upline. We need to explain in a way that our entire team understands. So when Scott says something, you know, um, we need to reinforce that and maybe translate that if we have to, or put it into our specific region and, and teach our team what, what Scott's trying to tell us, okay? Because our team, they look up to us more than we know, okay? Please remember that we are cheerleaders and kindergarten teachers, all right? So we are here to motivate and explain things in a way that even a five-year-old would understand. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go back to my, uh, I'm gonna go back to my presentation. Okay, so here I am. This was the, um, the very first incentive trip that I ever earned, um, it was the Mediterranean cruise. We were on the world's largest cruise ship, the Symphony of the Seas. And here I am with our co-CEOs, Heidi and Orville. Now, when I earned that incentive trip, I went from a star consultant to a super star consultant, all right? Because a lot of people get these ideas or negative thoughts in their minds that, oh, well, these incentive trips, you know, you have to be pretty far up there on the compensation plan to earn that. But you know what? I was on my third promotion. That's it. So I went from certified, from essential to certified, lead to star. So most people, um, you know, there's a lot of people on our team that are star. Worked it really hard, got superstar. And that's how I earned my first incentive trip was I was I went from star to superstar and I know a lot of people on this call are also in that same um, category so anyway but if there is an incentive I'm on it all right and uh, because I'm telling you once you earn your first incentive you will be earning all of them because they, you've had the time of your life and uh, since he spoils us 
and I have never been on a five star um a vacation like that ever before without uh before Cincy. So anyways, and I am not going to just work on it myself. No, I'm going to be transparent and I'm going to go live in my team page daily and I'm going to show how everyone on our team can also achieve um the, the incentive trips, all right? If I'm getting party bookings, if I'm getting recruits, etc., I share everything on my team page with my team. Um, I bet I do one Facebook Live a day, but it just reassures my team that they know that I am um, here for them, all right? Um, I have also learned to micromanage my team, all right? I don't just put everyone in a group chat and manage everything like that. This is why everyone is on a different level in their business and it would be rude for me to manage like that because some people really want to work since he has a business every day that's their full-time income and some are just doing it for fun for a discount all right so you have to know um what level everybody's on and how to to help them like that i do however have a leadership um private message group and I made groups for world tour, et cetera. But in regards to actually leading and mentoring my team, I private message my team members individually and help them like that. And it becomes a safe place for them to reach out to me if they need help or to call me. Okay. Because, um, a lot of people have questions about stuff, but they would be too, um, scared to ask about it in a, um, in a group, big group setting like what we're on now. So if you guys are um, do have questions and you don't want to ask me at the end of this call, you can um, private message me, et cetera, because I know how it feels. You know, we want to be in a safe place and that safe place is in an individual message. Um, you know what? I probably make myself too available at times. I'm sure you're thinking about that right now. But y'all, I love it. I absolutely love being a Cincy leader. I have fun. I take pride in helping people and watching them grow, promote, earn trips. It has to be one of the most rewarding things in life besides raising kids is is uh, is being a Cincy leader. I'm telling y'all, it's, it's so much fun. Um, so we are going to go back to the... PowerPoint. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. We'll just go. We'll just, we'll just keep it on my speech. Okay. Cause I don't want to get all dizzy, <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so let's say you had somebody you received the email, somebody just signed up on your team. You need to go through the experience of signing up with a new team member as soon as they sign up okay so as soon as they click join all right a pop-up video of Heidi and Orville appears all right they need to watch it if they do not um they clicked out and they forgot to watch it then you need to send the link to them in a private message on Facebook all right that video and all of that there is lots of training on the workstation you need to look on the training for how to um sponsor new team members is what it's called okay so they need to watch that video um they need to because in that video of Heidi and Orville it's Heidi and Orville saying that they need to go on the workstation they need to do the tour they need to do the checklist they need to read their consultant guide and ask them um you need to so this is how a lot of people feel bad they feel like they're not doing enough as a sponsor to to help their new team members but you have to remember that it's them we're, we're offering this opportunity for them and it's for them to decide if they want to make something awesome with Cincy or they just want to you know they just signed up and got an awesome kit and every so often they'll do a um an order or so but this is how I know who's going to do something with this business and who's not because I tell them as soon as they join they also need to read their consultant guide and then I follow up with them the next day and I said, okay, did you read the consultant guide? If yes, are you interested in earning the shooting star award from sensational star? And then that's when I know, okay, yeah, boom, they're interested. They want to do it or no, they're, they're really not motivated. They just kind of just signed up. Okay. So when, um, somebody just, uh, signs up, I'm checking in with them daily y'all every single day. I'm like, so y'all, you want to get started? Do you want me to help you? Um, get your money back on the investment of the starter kit, you know? 
some people are going to respond and they were going to be so hungry for success. And then you have others who will just say, yeah, not do anything else. Or some that just won't um, respond back to you in a private message. And you have to remember not to take it personally. Okay. And I know in the beginning, when you're just starting to get a team member, you don't have enough, um, I guess, experience in, in, in the statistics of who is going to, to do this and who's not. So then you take it onto yourself thinking that you're a bad sponsor, but it's not about you. It's about them. And you can't help it if somebody is going to do something or not. Okay. That's my child. Um, but anyway, but don't, don't give up on people right away. Just keep checking in. But this is something that Jen Audette told me. And I completely agree in my experience, if they don't do anything in two months, they usually won't. All right. That's why it's important to recruit at least five people per month. If you don't fi recruit five people a month and it's only like maybe two or one, that's okay. But aim for that five. All right. I know about the two-year plan, the two new recruits and 2,000 PRV a month, but what I've done is try to aim for 1,000 PRV and five new recruits a month. And you know what? It got me to director in two years. So I say it works, especially um, in regions like region two, where we are still up and coming, you know, you need to make sure that your business is more about um, team building. Um, if you are a leader, um, and I mean, we don't even have to have a lot of people and you could still be lead star, superstar consultant, doesn't matter. But if you can do, Scott got us to do a elite to lead course for our team. You should do it. I did it last month. I got, I got one, um, no, I got two people promoted to lead and one promoted to star and several promoted to certified. And I did 10 simple videos. Um, and they really liked it. And I think now more than ever, we can be doing that um, during this downtime, right? We've got so much time to be figuring out how to start YouTube channels and, and online trainings. Like, it's going to be great. But anyway, on your team page, you need to create a fun atmosphere. That's so important. You need, it needs to be full of love, support, make it fun. Um, and if you do that, People will stick around. Um, if not, they won't. You need to create a bond, not just about Cincy and helping them as a leader, but kind of create a bond um, outside of Cincy, like some com commonality that you have between each other. Um, and you guys know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, just send me a message. Um, because at the end of the day, we have to remember that it is not hard to get 200 PRV three times a year, all right? You just need to help your new team members, help motivate them, create a nice team atmosphere between you and them and all of your team. Um, it's important to make sure that new team members are welcomed in a nice welcome post, but not just in your team group, but here in the Team Emeralds group as well. If they are in region one, then be sure to add them to our upline, Jen Audette, and Beck and Callie Levi's um, training groups as well. Um, but anyways, but the biggest mistake I see in new leaders is they are making it all about them. Saying things like join my team, or they just focus all their energy on becoming the next rank. And that's a big no, no. Anytime, <laughs> my child, <laughs> um, when I started, I knew that I needed to help my team get to certified. I wanted them to make their money back on the investment of their $99 starter kit. And by doing that, and you just having at least your 500 PRV to be a leader, you will naturally grow and promote. There, you do not have to be begging your team about, you know, we're this much away from our goal or, you know, no, it's not your goal. It's they chose you. You're the leader. You're the mentor. You're a coach. And what does a coach do? A coach helps their team win. Okay. It's not about us. It is about them. And that is the biggest mistake I see. So if you're wondering why you have not promoted or why your team or why you're not paid at title or your, your team's not doing anything, it's because you're not helping your team. You were making it about them. And that's the honest truth. I'll just tell you that. Um, 
But here's the thing, and uh, Scott and Alexandra have talked about this at Reunion. Jen Audette has talked about it. If you've done any trainings on how you want to become uh, a Cincy director, is you need to help people get to star. When you have people get to star, you will naturally reach director, okay? And if you're wondering why you have not reached director yet, well, do you have stars on your team, star consultants on your team, okay? You should not be stressing on spending your months getting your, you know, how do I want to say this? You should have your income planned every month as much as you can. And I know now it's more online and not home parties and events. But if you try to get your PRV as a leader to where you want it, you can spend the rest of your month helping your team achieve their promotions, okay? Um, and then you'll have time to share the opportunity with others, all right? But just bottom line, make it about them and help your, your team. Um, they are so hungry for success and they're the hungriest and most motivated as soon as they hit that join button. That's why it's so, so, so important that you are checking in with them every single day um, as soon as they hit, um, you know, the join on your PWS. And just remember that they chose you. They could have um, went to Cincy.com, went to the consultant locator and chose somebody else, or they could have gone on YouTube and chose somebody else, but they chose you. So don't disappoint them by not um, communicating with them every day. So anyways, that's my, that's my speech. And I hope, um, Y'all liked it. If you have any questions, let me know. Or I think Scott's got some questions for me. Um, thank you, Amy. As always, Amy shares some great value there. Um, I just want to add to that because I know looking at the list here, there is quite... Hello, Millie. There's quite a few people um, with teams. And there is a figure um, that if you recruit 30 people, and people will do absolutely nothing. As Amy says, don't take it personally. Ten people will stick in orders every three to four months. Ten people will stick in orders every month. But when you recruit 30 people, you will also find one rock star. So it's all a numbers game, like Amy says. <clears throat> and if I'm absolutely if I could tell you one thing about Amy is I mean, I get added to a lot of team pages. And Amy's team page is vibrant every single day. There's always some value being shared by Amy. There's always some uplifting. There's zero excuses. And everybody in here is pretty much, I think, is the team leader. And it's important that we all in our own little communities do that, um, especially at this time. Like, you know, the only virus going to be spreading the emeralds over the next few weeks is definitely some positivity and motivation. And zero excuses, too. But um, it's a place where everybody can come together. You know, like, <clears throat> having not spoken to very many people for the last week, it's great to see lots of people here right now. Um, now I wish that night in Manchester, you know, I went to bed around 10 o'clock. I wish I stayed up to 6 a.m. and just went partying for the night and spoke to 100 people. Um, but, um, guys, thank, thank you very much, Amy. Um, You're welcome. I want to ask... I want to ask you one question. Um, you kind of talked about your incentive trip for, on the cruise, but I want you to share the other trips you've been on and, what, and go into more detail for two minutes why you would never want to miss another trip. So some of the other trips I've been on. So the first one was the Symphony of the Seas cruise, the Mediterranean cruise. We went all over Europe. I mean, Rome, um, everywhere, y'all, everywhere. Then the next well, trip well, we was to a trip <laughs> to Cancun. And since he even booked my flight so I could go home for Christmas, I hadn't seen my family in two years. And since he rearranged my flight to, to be able to go home to Texas and celebrate Christmas, and then we booked another flight from Cancun, went to Cancun. It was like amazing that was probably the most special trip just because like since he said it was okay to to rearrange my flight so i could go see my family for christmas that honestly that meant a lot that really changed um how i viewed Cincy because um 
it does. It holds a very special place in my heart. And to know that we would not have otherwise been able to afford a trip to go home and see my family. Obviously, I hadn't because I hadn't been home in two years. That really, t- that really was just amazing. That was probably the best trip. Um, Can I just pop you there, Amy, for a second? Yes. So, well, Amy got to go home, and that was pretty cool. I know that means lots of people. But this next trip she's going to talk about, you had explained where you could have gone, but where you went. And explain why you didn't want to go to the place you could have gone to. If you don't mind. Yes, and the other one was the 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 passport one where you could have chose um to go to New Zealand, Switzerland, or Florida. And um we chose Marco Island, Florida because my husband had never been to Florida before. And we actually brought his twin sisters along to the trip with us and um my daughter Millie. And, um, so we went to Florida, uh, instead. And because since he gave us the flight credit, um, the, the flights were at a good price more because since he is so generous that the flight credit to America was not much different than what we would have gotten in, um, to, to go to Switzerland. So we chose Florida um, because I wanted to, to go to my own country. And it's really important that your, that, um, of course I'm saying yes, yes, yes. Millie, you can climb up on the counter and get a big chocolate Easter bunny. Um, but, um, we went to Florida because it's something that, um, my husband really wanted to do and he was able to really help me. So get your husband on board show them this awesome vacation that they can go on. Um, And this one we're currently working on for top 50. I'll tell you, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the location, but oh my goodness. Like just tell your husband or your wife right now that do you want to take a trip to to paradise? If so, like we can make it happen with, with Cincy right now. It's about being an awesome mentor uh to our team and helping them reach certified and get their money back on the kit like it's it's gonna be great so um use the locations of the trips to really help do something fun for your family because you might not have ever gotten the chance to go somewhere um like this so definitely get your get your spouse and your entire family not just like your your immediate family but get your extended family on board i'll never forget the quote my dad said, he said, when we went to the Texas Cancun trip, he said, I have no idea what Cincy is, Amy, but you must be so good at it and having a lot of fun to be able to like go on these nice trips and to be able to stay at home and still make a good income. Because before my dad was having to, my dad had to pay for us to come home one time, but now he's like, wow, like she's making a good enough money and working hard that like, she's able to afford this herself. Like that's pretty incredible. Um, really it is. My husband's an engineer and even with a good, 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 good salary within, with GE, we still wouldn't have been able to go, um, you know, on a nice vacation like this. It's Cincy is, is awesome for, for doing these nice trips for us. They really are. And can I just add to that? What you got to realize is this is what, this is the bit people miss out. Yeah. You focus on earning an incentive trip. You earn that incentive trip. You get great self-esteem. You get great personal growth. But you've also given yourself a pay rise. Yeah? Where if you're in a normal job, where you work all year so you can have two weeks vacation, that, that number one, that holiday is going to come out of your wage. And number two, you've got to go back to work after the vacation. And number three, you don't get a pay rise. You know, just think of when you aim for these things, you grow in personnel, you grow in self-esteem, and you also grow your paycheck without even knowing. That's what I love about it. So thank you very much for sharing, Amy. Um, and I'm sure um, you'll get to see Amy, especially in Region 2, on a stage soon. And guys, take note of it, all Amy's tips. Honestly, this will be recorded. If you missed anything, I will probably, probably take me a few hours to get it up. Um, if you missed anything, go back to the recording. It will be on our YouTube channel. Um, and I'll post it in the emails after go and write some tips. Now I'm going to pass you to super. No, she's not a superstar director yet, but she's a superstar director. <laughs> if you get what I mean, we'll call the amazing director, 
Lisa Gary, who is going to share her world tour speech with you. Um, I'm just going to have to miss the first minute because I've got to go and get my phone charger, computer charger. Um, so don't think I'm just thinking, oh, Lisa's here, I'm off, because I want to hear this. But um, Lisa, what is um, – oh, i got to unmute Lisa first. Sorry. Or did you unmute yourself, Lisa? You're yeah, just unmute you yourself. Talk, what are you talking Lisa is from St. Helens, the West. I know yes. Lisa St. Helens in England. And what are you going to share with us today, Lisa? So my topic was um, fear up, care up, or gear up. So it's all about excuse busting, basically. Okay, I'm going to be 30 seconds, but I want you to get started, okay? okay. And hello to Mr. Yeah. Victor in the background. Yeah, he's changing Amari's nappy. <laughs> what a good man. Okay, I will. Okay, you've gone mute, but I think you said go ahead. Um, so, hi guys, my name's Lisa and I'm a Sensi Director from the North West. So, as I just said, this talk that I was going to do in Manchester was all about excuse busting. So, I do have my notes, um, otherwise I will just go off on a tangent. So, apologies if I am looking down. The basis around what I was going to share was around my personal story of Sensi because it is all about me excuse busting. So I was super excited to share my story at World Tour because that was me facing one of my biggest fears. So I'm gutted not to have been able to do it, but I totally understand the circumstances and I know I'll get a chance to do it another time. So the reason it was a huge fear that I was going to overcome by talking at World Tour is I'm a huge sufferer of social anxiety. So I went through heaps of emotions when I was preparing for my talk. Um, I shared lots of tears, lots of, lots of frustration. I was super, super scared. And I know by now, if I was stood in front of a crowd in Manchester, that I would have been absolutely over-emotional um, at just being able to do it. So before I get into things a little bit about me, um, I have three children, Rihanna, Isabella and Omari and a wonderful partner, Victor, who you may have seen walking past just now. And they are a huge reason as to why I work my Sensi business. I want to make them really proud. But I also work this business for me. So I'm a big believer in, in order for you to get over your excuses that you're giving, um, to, that stop you from working your Sensi business, is you have to find out why you're working your business. So for me, Sensi has become my medication and my therapy. Um, before Sensi, um, I was diagnosed with a neurological condition called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So I won't go into great detail, but it basically means that I have pressure on the brain from too much fluid. And I had to have brain surgery to put in a shunt, which drains the fluid from here to my lung cavity. Along with my anxiety, um, I was in a really bad place. So I just didn't feel like I had anything to drive me anymore because I wasn't able to work. Because I have anxiety alongside this condition, I then found myself in the house a lot. I wasn't engaging with anyone and it was just making things so much worse. I basically lived and breathed both my anxiety and my neurological condition. I'm also on a lot of medication. Not so much now, but I was on a lot of medication before. And right now I see Sensi as if I got out of bed every morning and didn't take my real medication, I wouldn't be able to live day to day. And it's the same thing with my Sensi business. Sensi gives me focus. It gives me the ability to help other people who are in a similar situation to me. And so I couldn't get up every day and not work my Sensi business because it would put me back into that dark place where I never want to be again. I have reasons every day that I could give that people would understand that I wasn't working my business. So I don't have a headache today. Yay. But most days I do. So if I woke up today and said to Scott, you know what, my head is busting. I'm really sorry. I just I can't do the Zoom today. He'd understand because I have this condition. However, if I dig deeper, I know that it's not a headache that stops me from doing things. When you live with pain every day, your pain threshold does get higher. And so you can work through that pain most of the time. So for me, even though I might have headache, it isn't that that's stopping me from working my sensory business. It's the anxiety. 
So I've got to be honest with myself and I've got to say to myself when I'm saying no or I'm saying oh, I really don't want to do that, is the real reason because I've got a headache or whatever other reason I'm going to give or if I'm completely honest, is it that social anxiety that's making me think, oh my gosh, I can't do it. And I know nine times out of ten, it's the anxiety that's stopping me. So I've had to really be honest with myself. A lot of people see me doing Zooms like this or doing my YouTube channel and think, how can this girl have social anxiety? But I can tell you that when I joined, I was that person that said I was only going to work my business online. I wasn't going to build a team. I wasn't going to do parties. I wasn't even going to sell Sensi to that many people. But with the help and support of Alexandra and Scott, I have been able to make small changes every day to get to where I am now. So when I was younger, um, school was horrible for me. It was the place that is the worst place for someone with social anxiety to be, especially because at that time, I didn't realise that what, that's what was wrong with me. And so everyone seemed me to be really shy and really awkward. Um, even though I had friends, I didn't feel like I had friends. And so you could put me into a room full of people and I would feel like that only, the only person in that room. It's not a nice feeling to have, but having Sensi means that I can take those small, small steps to overcome it. Now, at um, World Tour, I would have had a few slides up, which I don't have right now. And in those, I had a couple of pictures. So I'm just gonna to explain to you what those pictures were. So a few of these pictures were times in my Sensi journey where I wanted to say no to things because of my anxiety, but I didn't, and better things have come from it because I didn't say no and give in. So one of the pictures was from January 2018. It was a picture of me and a friend from back then called Vicky, who was a, um, a Sensi customer of mine, and it was World Tour in Northampton. I just found out I was pregnant with Amari and I'd had to come off a lot of my medication um, because of the because of the pregnancy so I was really really sick I had morning sickness plus all these horrible withdrawal symptoms from stopping the medication and I just didn't want to go but again when I asked myself really would would I not want to go just because I was feeling really ill or was it the anxiety around it it was 100% the anxiety around it and so I pushed through it and I went anyway. I had an amazing time. Um, we met up with another lady called Nicola from our wider team. And Vicky joined us as a consultant a couple of months later. Now, had I have not have gone, then I would have let Vicky down um, because she was excited to go. I wouldn't have met Nicola. I wouldn't have got all the content that was shared at World Tour. And maybe Vicky wouldn't have joined as a consultant either. So I was really happy that I pushed through and did that another photo I shared was later that year so in September 2018 this was Manchester reunite and at that point Amari was two years old so I'd had a c-section with Amari and um, because it was the safest way for me to deliver with my neurological condition and anyone who's had a c-section will know after two weeks you're still really sore Again, I was like, you know what? No one is going to say anything if I say that actually I can't come. But again, I knew it wasn't the C-section. It wasn't the fact that I hadn't slept because Amari was newborn. It was the anxiety around it. And so I went and it was amazing. And having Amari actually eased the anxiety because people weren't concentrating on me. They were concentrating on this gorgeous little tiny baby and they all wanted to have a cuddle. Um, so again, I was really happy that I pushed through it. Manchester Reunite was amazing. And then the next picture I was sharing was of Scott and Alexandra. Um, this was a couple of weeks after Reunite and they were traveling back from Australia. Now they were obviously really jet lagged, had no sleep, super tired, but they had found time in their day to say, because we're local, do you want to come and meet for coffee? Now I speak to Scott and Alexandra a lot but I'd never actually met Alexandra face to face. I've met Scott once before. So my anxiety says to me, oh my gosh, what if I go and meet them and I'm not what they expected? What if I don't have anything of value to talk about? And so I really didn't want to go. I remember waking up that morning 
are having had not a lot of sleep because of Amari and thinking, oh, you know what, I might just tell them I'm too tired. But I thought, how can I tell them I'm too tired when I have not had much sleep with Amari being newborn, when they flew all around the world, God knows how many times, and they were willing to see me. And so I went anyway, despite my anxiety. And it was amazing because they're two people that inspire me so much. And to be able to just go and say thank you and meet Alexandra face to face and spot again was amazing. And it's just made that relationship a lot better. The topic, like I say, was all about facing your fears and the emotions that come with that. So when Holly sent out the email to ask if people wanted to talk at World Tour, I immediately froze and it was an absolute no. How could I, with my anxiety, stand in front of 250 people and share something valuable? But when I, I sort of ignored the email, so I wasn't going to do it, there was something inside of me that was quite gutted that I hadn't put myself forward. And so we got a second email request to ask, and this time I just had to say yeah. Now Scott will tell you because I shared the first ever version of this talk with him. I was an emotional wreck. <laughs> I couldn't even speak. I was so emotional at the thought of speaking in front of so many people that I was just, yeah, it was, it was horrible. It's okay to be emotional. It is natural and everybody will cry or shout, whatever it is. The thing that I've learned the most is when you're faced with any obstacles, no matter what it is, is to find that safe place that you can get rid of those emotions, if that makes sense. So reach out to your director, one of your friends, your sponsor, whoever it is, someone who isn't going to get into a, how do I want to describe this? So not someone who's going to make what you're saying into a big, massive situation but someone who's going to allow you to soundboard and go this is what's wrong and they're going to go right do you feel better now right now let's move on I've been able to do that so I've got people who I can reach out to when I'm getting frustrated and I'm getting upset and I'm getting angry and be able to get that off my chest so then I can see things clearer so always always reach out for help if I was at World Tour by now, I probably would have been in tears. So at this point, I would have said, you know, it isn't a sign of weakness because if tears were a sign of weakness, I would be honestly the weakest person ever. I cry at everything. I even cried when we met up in Manchester because Victor said something about my sensory story. So I am very emotional and that is okay. And if you're emotional too, use it to your advantage. It shows we care and it shows we care about our business. It shows we care about our team. So just go with it um it's really easy to allow fear to control us so people's fears are different so one person may be totally feared about giving out a borrow bag while someone else's fear may be talking at world tour that doesn't mean that the borrow bag side is any smaller because to each of us our fears are as big as each other so just push through those fears and always ask yourself if you're saying that you don't have time to do something is that the truth or actually is it more that there's a, an underlying fear always be honest with yourself and always lead by example if you're hiding from your fears your team will also hide from their fears so be honest with your team my team know all about my health conditions they know all about my anxiety they know i find it super difficult to host a party but I go ahead and host it anyway we also fear what other people think of us and this is something that I have had to have a huge mindset change on but for anyone who has anything bad to say about you anyone who might gossip or anything like that there's always more people that are looking at you and are being inspired by you so 
forget about what the people are saying who you think may be mocking what you're doing or discouraging you in any way and always work for those people that are right behind you 100%. And this can be anything from friends, family, or the sensory consultants, absolutely anything. You might be in a position where your friends and family don't understand what your business is about, and so they're telling you it won't work. They're asking you why you're spending so much time on your sensory business. Be confident in yourself that you know you're spending time on your business now because in years to come, you're not necessarily going to have to spend as much time because you're doing the work now and you're building your team now and you're building up your customer base and you're doing it for a bigger and brighter future. So I was going to ask everyone at World Tour to find out why you're working this sensory business because as I said at the beginning, I'm a big believer of if you can find that reason right now, when you're then faced with these things of having no time or being too scared to host a party or being too scared to attend a Zoom, how many people probably don't come on these Zoom calls because of that little window in the corner where your face is? That was me. And now I'm just like, hey, you know what? I don't care anymore. So go away and find out why you're doing it, but make it about you, not just other people. Because if you can find something deep inside of yourself, that it's connected to something that's going to make you better, then you'll find that you'll overcome your excuses much, much more. And thank you for listening. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Thank you. So just let me take my phone off charge for a sec. Thank you so much, Lisa. You're getting a really bad view of me, guys, you know? Just to let you know, I'm, you know, I look really big here, but I do have quite white shoulders. But anyway, <laughs> this is about you, me. But it's not about me. It's about Lisa. Thank you very much for sharing that. I think <clears throat> when you talk about your fear, I think that can help a lot of people out in the situation, the, the global situation we're in right now, too. So that call was definitely um, very well, well prompted. Um, something I want to pick up from me and Lisa Amy, Danny Bonnell, Sarah Mason, Nicola Johnson, Joanne, lots of people in Manchester last week was, I went around the table and I kind of tried to speak to every single person and tried to get them involved. And every single person was different. And they were all from a different situation. Like Lisa's just shared a bit of her story, her social anxiety. Amy, as you can see, is a confident, yeehaw, yalt, Texan. We have Danny Bunnell, who would be big personality, confident. Um, we have Sarah Mason, who has you know, been hit, hit hard personally, doesn't make excuses. It was a table full of so many different people. And what I liked was that different personalities all came together and everybody fitted in. And that is what this business is about. When Lisa talks about her social anxiety at school, didn't feel that you know maybe people didn't think she, think she was odd, Lisa fits in in this in the Sensi group with everybody else. And it's important that we all stick together and we all um, take inspiration from Lisa's fear because what's happening in the world right now, it's fearful mainly because we don't know the end date. Yeah? We will get through it. Things will be better. We will learn from it. But we actually don't have that end date. And that is what is the biggest fear. Yeah. And I just want to let a few people know that everything's going to be all right. You look at our case, and I'm not saying my lockdown's better than your lockdown. Okay. But if you look at our case, we're probably worst case scenario with Amy. Worst case scenario. And I will tell you right now 24 hours of fear. Yeah. I'll be a leader. Yeah. I was, I was like, what is going to happen? But after 24 hours, okay. And I put life into. Put, put my life into plan, I can, and after a week in it, it's the best thing which could happen. We have to remain positive and remain as a community. And I can tell you right now, everything's going to be okay. I can tell you right now, everything's been okay. If you're in Australia, New Zealand, your government's hit it right at the right time. You're going to be out of this a lot faster than, than anybody. Yeah? The Netherlands, I, you, you might not agree with me, but I've watched your government from what I can see. And he, even though he collapsed last week <laughs> under pressure, he, he cares. And Big Bad Boris in the UK, I'm not even going to give my opinion. What you have to remember is this is what I like to tell people. 
people diss Donald Trump. People diss Boris Johnson. But we're very lucky in Europe and the USA to have two leaders like that. Why? Because they're two leaders who would love to have a statue of themselves and have a legacy for 500 years for the people who cured the global corona disease. We are lucky we have ego chasing leaders like that at this time. So put your trust in everything and everything will be okay. I can see Janelle laughing there. I'm glad you're laughing, Janelle. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing, Janelle. Um, but um, but use Lisa's call to get you through these times. Stick together. Be positive about your business. You've got to think outside the box. You know, these guys have both shared some great leadership skills with you. Um, put them into action. Don't just listen. Don't just waste this hour. Listen. Take notes. Put it into action. This is social... Mrs. Social Anxiety here has about 1,400 PRV and two recruits so far this month. Amy has two recruits and is smashing her team volumes and probably has well over 500 PRV this month. I guarantee Amy, Amy, 99% of her recruiting is online. Okay? Because she recruits Americans. Yeah? I can guarantee Lisa, Lisa's recruiting probably 9% is online. They take them online. Their secret is, guys, they get them online and they take them offline. Yeah? That is the secret. So don't just stay here for now and go, yeah, great talk, Lisa. Great talk, Amy. And just sit back. Go and put into action. Have a positive mindset. Always show up. Always turn up. We have a great business. We are fantastic owners. And in these times, don't use it as an excuse not to work your business. Use it as an excuse to thrive in your business. Use it as an excuse to, to have your own therapy. I say, let's make our customers not happy. Let's make other people happy. But use this as your safe, safe space to get you through it when you're watching the news. You know, say, screw you, news. I'm going to work my sensitive business. It makes me happy. Okay? And that's very, very important these days. So, thank you very much for tuning in. Janelle gave a smile earlier. I think I might ask Janelle to join us on a Zoom very soon. Um, she's not smiling now. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much, Lisa. Awesome leader. Seeing this person grow so much. Personal growth, exceptional. And you know what comes with personal growth? It comes income growth. And comes many other growth. And she can teach people to do the same. So, well done, Lisa. Amy, the same. Personal growth. What comes with personal growth? comes the income growth. You, your paycheck can only grow if you grow. Okay? So use this business to get outside your comfort zone, do great things, smile, be happy, and make other people be happy. And the rest will fall into place. Thank you very much for joining us. All those Netherlands people, Dewey Dewey, correct? Dewey Dewey? Is that right? Give me a nod in the head. Dewey Dewey. Um, uh, oh, my God. Aloha, no New Zealand. Kiora, but that's welcome. But we'll say Kiora to Janelle and good day to my Aussie friends and au revoir to Amy and bye bye. Bye bye, love to Lisa, to Lisa in the north of England. Have a great day, guys, and I will chuck up the recording in the next few hours. Thank you very much, guys. Boom. <laughs>